the Lord is risen, that's what the church continues to say. And as we prepare for worship this morning, I want to welcome you to the virtual service of St. Luke, African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. We affectionately call ourselves the Luke. You are welcome, and may the Lord bless you. The call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O ye servants of the Lord, those who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, another Lord's Day has dawned upon us, and we thank you for all that you have afforded us over the course of this last week. We thank you, God, for the large things, for the simple things. We thank you for being able to check on our families and find them all right. We thank you, O oh God, for being able to call our friends, our co-workers, uh, checking on one another. Lord, we thank you that by your grace, uh, we still stand strong as a congregation. Lord, but not all have received good news over the course of this last week. We are mindful that there are families who mourn the loss of loved ones in the midst of this health, this health outbreak. And what we pray, O oh God, is that you would do the work that you know to do, that you would comfort them and that you would uh, bless them and you would have compassion upon them that you would show up, O oh God, and remind them, as your word says, you will never leave us nor forsake us. We pray, O oh God, for those who are the health care workers, watching over those who are ill and infirmed. We pray for all health care teams, O oh God. We pray for all of those essential workers who go about the business of daily life in unordinary times. Give them your sustaining grace. God, those families and those individuals that are falling on hardships, we ask you, God, to uh, swing low and that you would provide for them in the midst of their needs. Teach us, O oh God, how to rally around them and to provide for them out of our resources, God. Um, bless us to be a human community at this time. And I pray, Lord, not just for my congregation, but I pray for all the congregations. I pray for all of creation. Bless us, O oh God. And as we have prayed time and time again, Bless us to do the things that we know to do, to stay back the hand of this health outbreak. And we pray, oh God, that you would do what heaven knows needs to be done. God, this is our prayer. This is my prayer. And we pray it in the name of thy son, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen.
For the disciples, um, 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 what kept you behind closed doors? Um, why did you get the idea that the place where God wanted you after calling you and sending you, and even before he sent you, he, he nurtured you and mentored you and trained you. He, 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 he gifted you. Where, where did you uh, come up with the bright idea that with all that God pours into you, all God wants you to do is, is, is just kind of, kind of, kind of sit on it. Just, 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 just uh, uh, St. Luke, I need to be your pastor this morning. Uh, um, for those of you who are just kind of sitting around waiting for things to change without being a part of the change. For those who are just sitting down, licking wounds, uh, uh, angry and, and, and hurt and disillusioned. Let me help you understand something. Uh, is God not able to still use what God has embedded in you? You mean to tell me with all of the resources and all of the gifts and all of the contacts, you mean to tell me that the brightest thing that we can do is get behind closed doors? and sit down on God. You never sit down on the church. I hope you understand that you, you don't sit down on the church. You sit down on God because it is the church that comes from the mind of God. The church is not our idea, not even the building. It's not uh, our idea. It comes from the mind of God. And, and every now and then as a child of God, you just can't look at your reality. You've got to be able to look with that spiritual eye and you've got to see things as, as God sees things. And, and I imagine, look, let me say it this way. Um, if Jesus knew what was going to happen to him and he still showed up, to uh, be crucified, then what does that say for me in the midst of not being crucified? I, 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 I refuse to let anybody keep me from serving the Lord. I, I, I refuse to do anything but walk in my calling. I refuse to let anybody um, um, humiliate me so that, that I, I bail out on God because God knows how to do something different 
with me. Yes, that's what this passage is about. God doing something different with the disciples. So I, I, I just want to ask, uh, I just want to ask y'all, um, 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 why uh, are you locked behind closed doors? What kept you uh, behind closed doors? Now, I ask this question because when I read this passage, um, I'm suspicious of the disciples. Forgive me. I'm forgiving. When I get to heaven, I'm going I'm to pull them aside. I'm going to ask them, uh, tell the truth and shame the devil. Why, why, why were you locked behind closed doors? I'm, I'm suspicious of their answer. Now, the answer that the text gives is that they were locked behind closed doors because they were afraid. They were afraid of the Jews. I'm, I'm, I'm real suspicious now because, because, because um, um, there came a point in, in the life of the disciples when, when, when Jesus was talking about going into hostile territory. And, and as Jesus was talking about going into hostile territory, um, um, the disciple Thomas said, no, 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 you can't do that. But then he backed up and he understood who it was that was calling whom. And, and Thomas uh, understood uh, uh, that where, 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 where you lead me, I'm, I'm going to follow. I don't understand you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're up to. But if you say we need to go, then let's go. And, and then Thomas, it would appear, uh, did some politicking and some cajoling of the other disciples. And then they came out with one resonant voice. Um, this hostile territory uh, into which Jesus was going to check on his boy. Boy, Lazarus. Um, 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 it was hostile territory. Uh, their lives might be possibly threatened. And, and so Thomas, in the midst of understanding that, that, that God calls us in order for us to go, uh, Thomas said, let us go with him that we might die also. That's, that's what it says in, in the Gospel of John. Uh, so, 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 so I just want to know um, if you had the courage then, what happened to your courage now? Oh, come on, come on, be for real with us. Uh, the fear, uh, fear of the Jews. Um, 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 what, 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 what's, what's, what's going on with that? I'm, I'm all the more suspicious because um, I, I, I did some reading uh, of this passage in the Greek language and, 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 and one of the things that I discovered uh, was that um, the word translated in English as the word fear is translated from a Greek word which means not being fearful of one's life, but it means being fearful of the demands that God had placed on them. Mm, mm. So, so, so what the disciples say uh, regarding fear of the Jews, that's just church rhetoric. Hey, don't, don't you pay attention to that. That's got nothing to do with what the real issue is. The real issue is that the disciples uh, do like many of us. Uh, Look, Lord, I just signed up for the benefits package. Uh, hear my prayer. Answer my prayer. Bless me. Prosper me. That's all I need from you, Lord. Don't you ask me to do anything. Don't you, don't you, don't you assign me to anything. Um, um, I don't want an assignment. I just want the blessings. I want you to hear my prayer and, and, and answer my plea and, and, and rescue me. When my soul's in trouble, transform my circumstance when I need your help, Lord. That's that's all. That's all. That's all I I I I, I really want. Make demands on me. Um, don't make me sing. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? I don't want to have to fight. Um, to maintain my faith, I don't want to have to work on anything. Um, I once heard our president say. Uh, this was long before he got elected, and somebody was asking him uh, uh, about the dynamics of his marriage. And uh, I remember that um, he immediately said, um, I don't want the kind of marriage that I have to work on. I just want to show up in the house, and my wife knows what to do. Um, many of us are just like that. We, we don't want to have to work on the faith. We, we, don't, we don't want to have to strive. 
Um, we don't have to strategize. We don't want to have to strategize. Um, um, in church, um, we just want things to happen. We, we just want to go out and get a magic wand and wave that wand in the name of Jesus and things happen. Presto, change. Oh. But somebody needs to understand that's not how it works in the church. Anybody who's worked in the church, anybody who's worked on their life, anybody who's worked on their salvation, they understand uh, this way the old folks used to say it, it takes time to be holy. I, I, I've got to work on me. I've got to work on my faith. I've got to work on my giftedness. No, the disciples, they didn't want to, they didn't want to be bothered with doing um any any kind of any kind of work. Um, um, they just wanted to show up for, for the benefits package and, and they were fearful, they say, locked for fear of the Jews. Yeah, I'm, I'm suspicious of that kind of answer. I'm suspicious because, um, like you, um, flashing across that uh, cobalt flat screen at work, you got your testimony dancing and flashing across the screen. If God be for us, then who can be against us? There it is, that uh, under that ladybug magnet on your refrigerator, you, you've scribbled a message to yourself to remind you what happens when God gets a hold of you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You have a bookmark in your Bible that reads in gold on a burgundy background, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So some of us, we, we are, are the opposite of the disciples. We say to God, where you need me, I will follow. I'll go with you through the valley. It doesn't matter where you, where you want me, Lord. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go with you. And when the Lord anoints you and when the Lord sends you out, what you discovered uh, uh, is that the Lord will equip you with strength that matches strength and power that matches power and courage that defies courage and wisdom that will fool wisdom and boldness that disarms boldness and confidence that stares down confidence. I'm suspicious of the disciples. Um, 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 they weren't locked behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. Uh, they didn't, um, they didn't want to uh, give in to any of the demands that Jesus is making uh, upon them. You see, but this is one of the things I've, I've discovered about uh, working for the Lord um, and, and working for the Lord. I'm talking about when you're working for the Lord outside of the church. Um, either your sense of commitment to the Lord will keep you going or it will be your openness to the Lord to move you by the power of his Holy Spirit. Um, there comes times in your life, I, I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. It's like fire shut up in my bones. The minute I try and sit down on God, you know, God has a marvelous way of waking you up in the middle of the night saying, hey, I need your attention. Uh, since you want to busy yourself to death, uh, I'm going to catch you when you sleep, and I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to let you rest. Uh, I've got something to do with you. I, 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 I want to move heaven forward. Yes, yes, yes. Um, they say that they were locked behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. That's a lie. They were locked behind closed doors because as that Greek word translated fear uh, helps us to understand, they were afraid of the demands that the Lord had placed upon them. I want to ask them another question. Um, what did the Lord do? when he found you locked behind closed door. Yeah, what, what did the Lord do when uh, you locked yourself behind closed doors? Now get this, they didn't only just shut the door, they locked the door. Nobody could get out, nobody could get in. Group think abounded with the disciples. Do we need to go out? Do we need to get from under uh, uh, the, this, this shadow of fear? Uh, no. Um, uh, let's stay right here where it's comfortable and calm and, and manageable, but, but something happens in this passage of Scripture. Uh, uh, and I contend it's what happens when, 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 when God sees us locked 
behind closed doors. Um, um, uh, what happened uh, is that the Lord stepped in. Jesus in his resurrected presence, he, 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 he appears out of nowhere, it appears. Um, 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 he just walked in, no, no invitation. Uh, he didn't send a post on Instagram saying, um, I'm going to be away at about 12 or uh, 35. No, the Lord just shows up because I believe that the Lord understands that for some of us, um, if the Lord gives us warning that he's coming, uh, we might uh, move to another location and lock the door. Um, um, we might uh, not answer the door. Um, we might not be open to his presence. The Lord just showed up. And when he showed up, um, uh, the disciples would say um, he did something strange. He, he hadn't done this before. Um, he breathed on us. I want to let you know that breathing uh, metaphor um, uh, takes us back to um, what God did at creation when when God saw creation and 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 creation was not like God uh, wanted it to be, uh, He breathed and said, "Let there be light." Um, that's a way of saying that the Holy Spirit got involved, got a part of the mix, and the remix um, um, in the valley of dry bones uh, when, when the Lord asked the prophet can these bones live that was a rhetorical question the Lord was just trying to set your boy up to understand I'm getting ready to work in the midst of nothingness and so and so uh, he, he breathed on the dry bones and, and the old preachers used to say it this way and, and, and the foot bone connected to the ankle bone and the, and the ankle bone connected to the leg bone and, and before the prophet realized the valley of dry bones was a strong army that God had put together and breathed new life in. Well, every now and then, um, at first glance, um, when you are uh, bound by your reality, at first glance, um, when you are living beneath your privilege, that's what I want to say to some folk. Um, um, that's why you need to find a church that's got some Holy Ghost fire to it. Because where there's fire, that means that God is up to something. He's, he, he's working on something. He's, he's pressing something. He's making something different, bringing about a new reality. What did he do? When he saw you all behind closed doors, the apostles would say, um, he, he, he simply breathed on us. Um, that's a way of saying that, that God got in the mix with his spirit, with his, with his presence, and he infused a, a new energy. Um, at first glance, there they were, all, all defeated. But when, when Jesus breathed on them, mm, there was a new reality when, when Jesus uh, infused his spirit on them. Uh, that's when the Lord got busy and said, uh, you know about first glance theology when you look at yourself and you see what you see. But, but John acquaints us with second glance theology. John, uh, for those of you who like this kind of information, John writes in dualisms. He, he likes to write things in two. So, so he talks about darkness and light. Um, he talks about God from above and God from below. That's, that's, that's John's way of signaling that God abides by a second glance theology. You can't look at this passage and just read about the life of these disciples at the beginning of the story. You've got to pay attention to them at the end of the story. You see, what had happened was uh, the rest of the story helps us to understand uh, that God was doing something. And as, and as God was doing something, uh, he, 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 he saw that the disciples had stalled. And in order to get them out of their stalled state, uh, what God decided to do was to re-anoint them and re-appoint them for the ministry that he had placed on them. And so he breathed on them. Somebody here needs God breathing on you. You're stalled. You're stymied. Um, you are paying attention to first glance theology. You're looking at your problems uh, as you see your problems. Um, you are challenged uh, because the way that you're looking at the world represents a uh, 
first glance theology, but John would say, uh, look at how God does things. You see, at the beginning of the story, where they are locked behind closed doors, now look at them after the Lord shows up and look at my hands and look at my feet and understand I'm not going to leave you where I found you. And then all of a sudden, when God breathes on them and God anoints them, what happens? Somebody says, we've got to get out of this place. We've got to get from behind these locked doors. And so you find in the 22nd chapter that the first thing they do is that they go and find Thomas. Well, Thomas wasn't in chapter 21, but now they engage Thomas in chapter 22, and Thomas wasn't at the house where they were locked in. That means that the disciples uh, got out from that house and got out from their fear and got out from the demands that God had placed on them that they were running from and they moved out. I want to say to somebody, uh, they got to a missing Thomas. Is there somebody here? who needs to get to a missing child? Is there somebody here who needs to get to a missing friend? Is there somebody here who needs to get to a missing church member? Is there somebody here who needs to get to a missing choir member? Is there somebody here who needs to get to a missing friend who's been hurt by the church? Is there somebody here who's missing a principle in their life? Oh, you can't do it by your own power. You need to be anointed all over again. And what happened was that Jesus stopped by. When he stopped by, he said, oh, no, I've invested in you too much. I can't leave you where I find you. What did he do when he saw you locked behind closed doors, disciples? He breathed on us. He anointed us with the power of his spirit. We left this place. And so second glance theology involves seeing that the disciples have moved beyond that locked door. And they went out and they changed the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. St. Luke, are you well? I want to ask you that. Are you well? I hope you are well. And uh, with a shepherd's heart, uh, I say reach out to me. Um, if it's getting to be just a little bit much for you, especially if you are in the house by yourself and you don't have enough people checking on you, uh, call me. Let me know. Reverend, I need you to check on me. I will gladly do that. Um, during these times, uh, it is a great privilege to be a part of a faith community uh, for uh, we look after one another and uh, I want you to be looked after. As you've heard me say time and time again, you do not have to journey alone. Allow me to be your shepherd and watch over you. Hello, how are you? Uh, this is Pastor Chapel, and uh, my officers have encouraged me as I'm about to share with you uh, the various ways of giving to support uh, this ministry. Uh, I especially invite you as a member of St. Luke uh, to give. Uh, you can give via Givelify, uh, St. Luke Amy Zion Church, Birmingham. Uh, you can drop by the church, as many of you are doing, and uh, just stick your tithes, your offerings, in the mail slot. Um, or you can mail it in. For those of you who are watching and you are not a part of our congregation, at least you're not a formal member, uh, I consider you a member just because you're watching, uh, you're welcome to give uh, via Givelify as well. The Lord bless you. Thank you for sharing. Stay safe.